Hello and welcome to episode 40 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. In this series, I essentially play 15 minute plus 10 second rapid games on Chess.com and talk you through my thought process while I play with the intention of trying to teach you what I'm thinking so that you can start to understand play like how chess works at a higher level. I know I'm not a master or anything, but... I would assume the vast majority of my viewers are lower rated than me. Otherwise, like, why would you be watching if you're already better than me? That doesn't make much sense. Um, and then in the post-game analysis, I can use the computer and the fact that I can actually play moves out on the board to better explain what I was on about during the game. So that, again, I can try and teach you guys and maybe have some fun along the way. So I'm going to search for a game and the series is done with the intention of getting to 2000 ELO, although education is the primary goal, but uh, we're not too far off. 31 ELO. Let's see if we can make a dent in that today. All right. We have the white pieces against Dodorak from the United States of America. So this is a showdown between the UK and the USA and we have the Sicilian defense. The A3 Sicilian, the Mangarini variation. It's very tricky. We might get a gambit line with B4 if our opponent allows it. And, oh, yes, he does. Okay, okay. B4 is going to be on the board. And real quick, if you want to check the previous episodes of the Rating Climb and the other games on my channel featuring this opening, if you want to try and learn this for yourself, then check the playlists below. Here, we are going to go b4, and the point is, if he takes, we're going to take back with the a-pawn. If he takes the b-pawn, so we'll be down two pawns for the price of one, right? Then we're going to go c3 with an attack on the knight, and after the knight is forced back, we're going to take a massive center with d4. And there's loads of tricky lines coming off of that. Now, if our opponent trades one set of pawns, but gets too scared to take the next one, then there's a good chance we play b5 to try and kick the knight off of its natural developing square. And if he trades no sets of pawns and plays, I don't know, a developing move like d6 or e6, then we can consider pushing b5 all the same. Again, kicking this knight off of its natural square, taking some nice space, and this pawn will be protected by the bishop, so it's not all that vulnerable anyway. Our opponent takes... We're going to take back, and we're going to see if he wants to accept the full pawn sacrifice or not. And even if we don't get some really trappy line after takes c3, knight c6, and d4, we are a pawn down, but we do have not only a, not a lot of space in the center with pawns on c3, d4, and e4, we also have an open a file for the rook which can be put to great use because we can potentially take advantage of the b5 square because a6 protecting b5 will be ineffective because the pawn can never take anything that lands on that square because that will hang a rook in a lot of cases. And also if he tries to play a6 for whatever reason in this position to stop b5, it doesn't work so you can't take it anyway because of the pin on the rook. So our opponent doesn't accept the sacrifice, and he plays e5. And e5 kind of forces us to go b5, which is what we're going to do. Because if we continue to go, yo, do you want to take the pawn after playing a move like knight f3? Then if he takes and c3 and the knight retreats, then d4 isn't as effective because he can trade pawns because he now has a pawn on e5. So you've still got to remain accurate. Okay, knight to e, well, knight c to e7. So he's blocking a lot of his development. I'm assuming he wants to put his knight on g6 to defend e5 if we go knight to f3, which is logical. I'm tempted to play bishop to c4. I'm a bit worried about d4 though. Sorry, d5. There, there. Not a fan. Bishop b2. Looks kind of nice. But I want to put a knight on c3. So if we go knight f3 and then d5. 
if we take and he takes with the knight, then we can just take on e5 and we're up a pawn, queen e7, queen e2. If knight f3, d5 takes and e4 attacking our knight. Knight g5 attacking the pawn. Then he has queen takes defending the pawn. I'm not in love with that. I'm not in love with that. If we go bishop b2, d5, and we take, knight takes, we snap up the pawn on e5. So queen takes, knight c3. There we have some nice development. We we could go c4 just to stop d5. That is an option. But I don't think I really like it. Hmm. This position is kind of unfamiliar to me, so I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. Because normally the knight lands on d4 and then you'll kick it away like this. And then d5 isn't as big of a threat because this knight isn't helping with the defense of that. Knight c3, d5, takes, takes. Mm, don't like it. We could go d4 ourselves, actually. d5, takes, takes 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 knight c3 bishop f5 bishop e3 attacking a7 that looks promising so if d4 and everything gets traded, we should be good. And if we have takes, takes, our queen is difficult to attack, but this diagonal is going to become weak. But, uh, it's difficult for him to use it, especially if we put a bishop there. Okay, I'm going to go d4. I'm going to go d4. It feels like the right move. Because a knight can't come to c6 to attack our queen if we end up with a queen there. If we can get d5 in... We're going to have a very big space advantage if he plays a move like d6. If he goes knight g6 defending the pawn, we can probably just go knight f3. And just continue applying pressure to the center. I may not have handled this in the absolute correct way. This just feels very principled. Um, it feels like it can't be incorrect. So, we'll see. We'll see. I did spend almost four minutes on that move, which isn't ideal. But like I said, it is um, something I haven't seen before. Is uh, knight c to e7 rather than knight d4 in that position. Because knight d4, I know I should just push c3, kick the knight back. And I can kind of continue to develop like normal. Okay, so knight g6, knight f3 makes a lot of sense to me. Let's do it. Let's not take too long about it now. Knight f5 is never a concern. I can go g3 or I can just snap it off depending on the situation. Bishop b4 check isn't a concern. We can go c3 defended by the knight. Or we can always resort to bishop d2 if needed. So that's not a concern. We are threatening to take if he takes us. Like I said, queen takes. Uh, he could try queen f6 trying to trade queens. But we should just be able to play e5. What? Just c3? Is he really trying to argue... That he's taken the square away from my knight. 
Well, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. That looks stupid. Maybe it's not, but blocking this as well. But if obviously if I take, then it's good for him, but I'm just not going to take. I have the option to push, but then his bishop's going to go to c5, and it's kind of nice there. Uh, I'm tempted to play a move like knight to knight bd2 to look at c4. Or we could consider knight a3 to look at c4. Just to keep the queen looking here. By the way, if takes, he actually can't take with the knight because his bishop hangs. So if takes, he would have to take with the bishop. But then after this trade, eh. Bishop c4 is interesting. Because if takes... Bishop takes... Queen d5 threatens mate and threatens the bishop. But then queen e7. And things are defended. So knight a3 looks logical looking at c4 just to apply further pressure. And if knight a3 and he takes though... Then takes, and if he goes back for bishop b4 check, bishop d2. We have a big center, he's got an isolated queen pawn. If he trades with us, looks good-ish. I'm not completely sold on it. Bishop a3 is worth considering. Trying to get a trade of bishops. Mm, I feel like I'm helping him. Also, if knight... Okay, I'm going to play knight a3. Wait, knight a3, queen a5? We could play bishop b2, but I'm pretty sure knight c2 sacrificing this pawn is good for us. I'm pretty sure that's good for us. I know we're going to go a pawn down in that position, but I know other positions where it's good to sacrifice the c3 pawn if the queen comes out like this. So I don't think I'm concerned at all. Obviously, if, if he trades, then my bishop's going to get on that long diagonal, and that's a problem for him. Knight c4 looks like a no-brainer. Yeah, absolutely, we're going to play this. Queen c7. I'm looking at the move b b6. Again, playing on this pin. And uh, if we go like queen c7, b6, queen b8 to keep an eye on the bishop. Then we can take. We can't take back because the queen's overloaded. Queen back to c7. We might have something a bit better. Here, here, here. Rook takes. He can't take again because his queen is going to get overloaded. And if the queen comes back to c7, then we can promote. So queen c7 looks pretty losing. If the bishop drops back to b8, again this move exists. But I think I'd rather play bishop to a3. Yeah, can't we just go b6? You've got no threats. I don't care about e4. e4 can be sacrificed. He's got no checks on my king. This diagonal is covered by the pawn. What? What? Oh, shh. did he mean to go here? Oh, come on. Can I, can I give him a take back? I'm going to try and type to him. Uh, if he can request a take back. Because, is that, is that not a thing? No, no, he abandoned the game. Okay, yeah, that was clearly a mouse slip. Clearly a mouse slip. And I think that was an excellent game. Um, very, very nice. 
and it's quite instructive. I think what we'll do is we'll analyze it and we might just jump into a second game to be honest because uh, it's kind of a shorter one. Don't get me wrong, we played very very well I think. I think I punished that really nicely. So we're going to analyze it and then I think we'll play a second one. All right, so 88.2% accuracy for us, 573 for him. Again, the accuracies aren't that big a deal because it was a short game, so taken with a grain of salt. A pinch of... Pinch? No, a grain, a grain. I think you'd probably say Eva. Uh, so E4, C5, A3, Knight, C6, B4. Uh, this is uh, the Gambit line. And typically you see this sort of thing and you take a massive center and there's all sorts of complications from here. Again, check the playlist below if you want to see some of my other videos in this sort of position. He accepts the first pawn, but he doesn't want the second one. We go b5, which is the best move because now if you are stubborn and try and gambit this pawn all the same, apparently if the knight takes, it's good. You can just do this anyway, but it makes more sense to take the bishop to develop. And if you try c3, bishop a5 is a move, but even just bishop e7. And now if you try d4, I mean, you get a big-ish center, but you are missing the c3 pawn in this case. Something like d5, e5, bishop comes back to b4 check, the knight's going to develop to e7. This position is fine for black, the bishop's probably going to come to e3. And you're just down a pawn for not a whole lot of compensation. So, you know, if uh, e6 is played, you can try and insist on gambiting the pawn with a move like knight to f3 if you really want. Because here you can take a bit of a bigger center because black can't trade with you. And if he goes e5, then you can consider moves like d5, forcing the knight back, d6, and... You're looking at squares like um, c7 to take advantage of. But yeah, after e5, you should play b5 to kick the knight. Knight d4 is the best move, which is what I was expecting. c3 kicks the knight back to e6. And then you can kind of just develop normally. d4 isn't amazing because after takes, takes, bishop b4, check. Uh, again, black kind of gets to trade a bit of your central power off, although you aren't down a pawn. So knight c to e7 is a bit strange. And d4... Okay, I don't know why it's saying it's not the best move. Because on my analysis it's saying it is the best move. It does also like knight to f3 and bishop b2, which are my other two candidate moves. But I wasn't sure about d5... So I'm correct if you take then e4 and it's basically equal. But apparently you can take on e5. And if black takes like this. Ah, then bishop c4. And you're missing e and d pawns to try and block this. So if you try bishop to e6. Takes, takes, I assume queen check. Oh no, then just g6. So... Funnily enough, rook a4 is one of the best moves coming after this pawn. <laughs> Bishop b2 is also good. d4 is good. Okay, well, d4 is the best move, though. And the point is, if he takes, I was just going to take back with the queen. Knight f3 is perfectly playable because you can't really defend this pawn anyway. But I was going to take back with the queen with the idea that, yo, you can't attack my queen. Uh, d5 is a move here. Knight d2, de, queen d8, king d8, knight takes. And I did look at a similar endgame to this, and I was like, yeah, I like this position. I think I was looking at d4, d5, takes, 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 uh, what was it, knight c3, knight c3, bishop f5, and... I can't remember exactly the line I was thinking. But knight g to e2, and apparently white has a plus 2 advantage. 
Oh no, I was looking at bishop e3 to go after a7, which is still a fine move. Knight g6 attacks my pawn. Knight g to e2 is good. I can queenside castle with check if I want. This is just a nice position for white, especially because black's king is a bit exposed. Obviously, I can't checkmate him right now because I don't have queens on the board. But it's just a nice position, right? So, anyway, my opponent goes knight g6, which makes sense. If I take and he takes, maybe I can go f4 or bishop b2 or something. But I figured knight f3 was great. If you take it, then again, I was planning on taking with my queen because it's very difficult to attack my queen. Putting pressure on g7, pressure on a7, just dominating the center. If d5 gets played, then it's just sacrificing a pawn. So I don't know why the computer's considering that. But yeah, this is just a very difficult position. To be fair, on bishop e7, you can't take because, whoops, you're losing a rook. But again, it's pretty easy. If bishop f6 here, I assume you can push. Ah, d5 is a bit more accurate. Threatening mate. Here, here. Move the rook. Yeah, the computer really likes this rook a4 idea. I guess helping out in the eventual defense of e4 if you drop the bishop back. But anyway, he goes bishop b4 check. And like I said, I didn't believe in this move. I don't see why you'd want to induce me to play c3. Like, that just helps me support my center. And it's... Uh, the only really good move in the position, you can go bishop d2 in trade like this if you really want to. But why? When you can just kick his bishop up back. Go to d6. Again, I thought this bishop was quite weak. Apparently taking is one of the best moves. Uh, obviously if knight takes, and I win the bishop, but I wasn't sure about bishop takes. There, there, queen d4. And if the knight just drops back, I don't really want to take here because then queen f6. Still a good position, but oh, apparently you just keep developing with moves like knight d2. Okay, okay. Well, knight a3 is a mistake because of takes. And I did see this line. I did consider this. And I was like, uh, this isn't amazing. But I also don't have to take back with the pawn. I can take back with the queen. This isn't a move because I control that square too many times. Queen e7. This is hanging, so I can always cash in like that. But I guess I just have moves like knight c4 if I want anyway. Bishop c5. Then I can take queen f6. Computer really likes bishop h6 in these lines. Because if you trade, then I win the exchange. And if you take the bishop, then I win your queen. So it kind of like puts black into a little bit of a stalemate. And e5 is looking dangerous. You can't take on c3 because my queen has x-ray vision on that. So bishop f8 is the best move. And I guess you can just kind of trade. You're up a clean pawn. And your position is pretty dominant. I would take this any day. I have to give up c3, which is funny just barrel into the black position black really can't move and again it's so difficult for black to develop on the queen side because moves like b6 exist a lot of the time this pawn is really tying down his attempt at development but uh, yeah he goes knight to f6 we play the best move again knight c4 i don't know why that's classed as an inaccuracy apparently taking is a little better is it the same queen d4 line no, queen d6? Queen e7, though? Takes, takes. It's not very human to want to trade off like this. I guess the point is that you just have so much space with your pawns. But this isn't that decisive. It's equal material. And I've got to put in a lot of work to convert this. So I thought knight c4 was very smart. I'm hitting the bishop, I'm hitting the pawn, and it's very difficult for the bishop to maintain defense. The computer wants the bishop to drop back, and then I just win this pawn very, very cleanly. I don't even have to uh, compromise my pawn structure for it. I was expecting bishop to b8. But here I am still just winning a pawn. Knight e4, queen d4. 
Where's the knight going? Knight's trapped. So with like d5, ed, knight takes, saving the knight. Knight b6? <laughs> Again, playing on this pin, knight b6. If the queens get exchanged like this, then I win the rook and I'm up an exchange. And if you don't take it, say you just castle, then I win a, the rook. That's very cool. So yeah, I was expecting bishop b8. I thought that was more resilient. Bishop c7, I thought I was just going to go b6, and black still has a lot of problems. If you take this, I have knight d6 check, which not going to lie, I didn't see immediately. But I feel like I'd be confident to have found that if the position had arisen. Queen b3 threatens mate, queen e7. Bishop a3, this is horrible. Horrible stuff. So queen c7, yeah, just b6. And so first we'll look at queen b8. Here my plan was rook a7, like I said. And if you go rook a7, then pawn a7, your queen is overloaded. If you take, then I take. And if you move, then I promote, because your queen is under attack. If you don't do anything, then I'm threatening this. If you try and move your bishop to a square like e7, queen a4 puts continued pressure on. Rook takes, b takes, queen a8, knight b6, I'm winning the queen. Again, I didn't calculate all of this. I saw this position and I was like, this must be winning. It's not as good if you take with the pawn because then the queen returns to c7. You're still doing very well, but it's not quite as winning. Now, the line our opponent played was uh, queen c5, which was clearly a mouse slip. Clearly he meant queen c6. But then d5, queen c5, maintaining the defense, bishop a3, you're losing this bishop all the same. There's nothing you can do. It's game over regardless. So yeah, that's game one. This might be a very long episode depending on how long the next game goes, but uh, let's get into it. All right, game two against a, b, c, d, e, f, g, 13, 13 from Japan. We see e4 and we play c6. The Karo Khan defense. Let's see what we can do against a high rated opponent. I'm going to play d5 against d4. And we have the exchange variation. This is. It can kind of get boring, but depends on how our opponent approaches the position. Knight f3 is a bit of a lesser known or a lesser played variation, because it can invite bishop g4 in some circumstances. For now, we're just going to develop our knights though. Uh, I'm expecting bishop d3 and c3. Uh, I'm just going to go knight f6. Bishop d3 is expected, followed by a move like castles. On bishop d3, I'm probably going to play bishop to g5. Because the reason I'm waiting for him to move his bishop is because if... Uh, let's just imagine he plays a move like knight to d2, for whatever reason. Then after bishop g4, he might go bishop e2 breaking the pin, which is fine, but if he goes bishop d3, then the pin is a little bit stronger, because he'd have to retreat to break the pin. Of course, he can always play knight bd2 to support his knight, so his queen doesn't have to worry about defending it, but then the bishop can get blocked in. Bishop's probably going to come to f4 anyway, but it's worth noting. So, bishop g4, don't see a problem, let's do it. If he tries to expand like this to kick my bishop out, then uh, I don't care at all. It's just weakening to the white position. It's not good. Even if he intends to castle queenside, it's really not good for him. At least I don't think so. <clears throat> if bishop g5, I suppose h6 is less playable. Because then g4, bishop g6, takes, takes is a bit worse. Because I'd have to take back with the f pawn rather than the h pawn. And taking back with the f pawn weakens my position. Taking back with the h pawn strengthens it really because it opens my rook up. So bishop f4 as expected. e6 looks like the natural move. 
Uh, e6, queen b3. Then I can't really take the knight because of queen b7 attacking my knight. So I'd like to play queen b6, I think. Looking at b2, because the bishop's just stepped off of that. And if queen b6, queen b3, then I can trade and take the knight and ruin his pawn structure a bit. That might be fine for him, but I feel like that would be a good way for us to try and push for an advantage. He may be able to play a move like knight bd2 to give this pawn up. But then c3 will fall, so I'm not convinced. Okay, he castles. So can we take, is the question, on everybody's mind. Is this a poisoned pawn or not? Well, if we take, he has to defend the rook. So knight bd2 is the only move. Easy calculation, right? Then he's potentially threatening rook b1. But c3 is hanging. So what if we take c3? Then we're attacking the bishop. Okay, so rook c1 isn't a move because we take the bishop. And the knight has no useful discoveries. Uh, because we're just going to trade queens. So queen b2, knight bd2, queen c3. Easy calculation, like I said. Bishop's under attack. If the bishop goes to square like b5, is that concerning? Queen a5 attacks the bishop. If takes, takes. There's no real attack on my queen anyway. Not gonna lie, taking on b2 looks scary, but I feel like it's the best move. This is very easy calculation to do because they're the... I mean, I don't have to take on c3. I guess I could go to a3, but... I don't see a reason not to attack his bishop. I don't really see where the bishop goes other than b5. Unless he wants to move this knight. Like here. Okay, let's check that. Queen b2, knight d2, queen c3, knight b3. Meaning that the queen now defends the bishop. Can we just go e6? Maybe. Rook c1. Queen b4. Let's indulge. If I blunder, I blunder. But I don't think I'm blundering. This feels like a mistake from white. Maybe he has compensation? I mean, I mean, he definitely has some kind of compensation. But I don't know whether it's enough. And I don't believe it's enough for two pawns. Here, here. And uh, taking can't be good for him. If we can get like e6, bishop e7 in castles, it's basically game over. Mm, not game over, but we have a clear advantage. Can we not just take this bishop? Queen d3, rook b7. Is queen a4 on the cards, maybe? We can just go queen to um, a6, attacking the rook and defending the a4 square. If queen b3, defending the rook. Knight a5 doesn't work because the queen can then access a4. It's a little bit scary. But maybe we can just go e6. There's no way he can give up a whole piece. There's absolutely no way. Rook b7, queen a6. Queen b3. Even rook c8. Just giving this knight a ton of defense. Here, 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 here. E6.
Looks good to me. I've got to say. If the queen gets to a4, it might be a problem. So I think queen a6 is the best move. Because queen a4, we might have some problems on this diagonal, right? So this makes sense. Upon queen b3, protecting the rook, I like rook c8 as well because it stops rook c7 from coming with as much threat because then we can trade. If this knight drops, it's not the end of the world because we'll still be up a pawn. Obviously, I'd like to preserve the knight, um, you know, because then we're up a piece. But if it drops, it's not game over or anything. We still should have a material advantage. Although it won't be as significant as we currently do. The, the only issue is that, um, you know, this rook is going to struggle to get into the game because this bishop's going to struggle to get into the game because we need moves to castle with. So, you know, that's, that's the concern of the position. But if we can solve that problem, then, you know, we are absolutely fine. We are in fantastic shape. So we just need to figure that out. Queen b3 as expected. Okay, nice. Is this of any concern? Mm, I don't think so. Because we can just trade. And we cover all the checking squares. And there's no light squared bishop, right? Here I'm a bit worried about this. A move that's interesting is knight d8. It looks maybe a little bit silly. But like I said, we're controlling all these checking squares on the uh, on the light squares, right? By the way, I would love if I could bring my bishop back right now, but I can't. Knight d8 attacks the rook. Mm, where's the rook going? Because b4 leaves it vulnerable to this bishop. b5, my queen is still attacking it, so that could be an issue for him. And then we can just cocoon up and castle, and then we're good. I think I'd like to start with taking just to trade pieces because I'm a bit worried on knight e5 that my bishop gets put out of the game. This is not of any concern. Okay, let's trade first. Of course, we're up a piece and a pawn, so... Trading is in our favour anyway. Knight d8. I really, really like that move. And yeah, we just control all the checking squares. And our queen can't be attacked by anything other than his queen, really. Uh, knight d8 here. e6. If he goes for this, we can just come to b6. Let's do it. This doesn't concern me, because not only is he trading another set of pieces, but he's also not threatening anything. Um, wait, takes, takes, here, here, here. We have enough time. Also, if takes, takes, queen b6, ah, then the queen can hang around on squares like c8. So again, I think I'd just like to keep my queen protecting the checking squares. Obviously, we should take this. Is this of any concern? Nah, because again, we control all the light squared checking squares, so we should be okay. Here, here, here. Here? 
then we have queen b7. What if we go queen b7 now, actually? I forgot we had that move. Queen b7, then he can't step over here like he could if we go to b6. Queen b7, the queen would have to retreat to e5. Then his attack's over. There, there. We could go knight c6. But then his queen relocates and then his knight could come into e5. I don't want his knight on e5. I'd rather his queen be there. Here, here. e6. Bishop here. Bishop here. This is a move. Takes away e5, attacks the queen. If the queen goes to a square like c7, we can force the queen out. Okay, knight d7 or queen b7. Well, this leaves the defense of this pawn, but it does control e5. But if queen b7, he has to go queen e5, which is easier to calculate for a start. And he can't play rook b1 anyway. Knight e5 also can't be played because his queen's on that square. Let's do it. Ah, he just resigns. He just resigns. Okay, well, fantastic. That makes our job very, very easy. Uh, maybe there was a bit of fight left in the position, but it is basically game over. Like, he just doesn't have an attack. Um, what? Here. Here. Maybe he can go here in this case. But even then, like... You don't want to play a move like queen b8, because you're going to lose your queen. But queen b6. Maybe it's not the most accurate way to go about this position. But I feel like this still puts some pressure on. I feel like he should have gone for this, but he decided enough was enough. Let's analyze this. And fortunately, this episode isn't going to go massively too long, because we've had two fairly short games um yeah i feel like taking that pawn on b2 was definitely the right way to go but we'll see what the computer has to say all right well game review gives 83.6 percent accuracy to him and 85.9 percent accuracy to myself maybe taking the poison pawn was actually bad let's see let's see so this is going to be interesting. We have the exchange Cairo Khan. We have knight f3. We have knight c6, c3. These moves are kind of interchangeable. Bishop d3, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5. There's no point taking on f3 for absolutely no reason. I mean, you can if you really want and just get an insanely solid position. But it just helps white in all reality. It gives white the bishop pair. So, bishop h5, bishop f4, queen b6. e6 is the best move, but I was a little concerned about queen b3. Okay, well this is interesting. So apparently bishop d6 is the best move. And I will have to remember this for future preparation. Because here, this line is obviously good for black. Because our knight is defended, we win b2. That is a poison pawn. If you take, take, whoops, take, take, and like castle, then we take on f3. So, knight bd2 defending the knight. Bishop g6 is best. Takes, takes. I would take this position with black. But if white doesn't exchange, he kind of has to, because his bishop's undefended. If he goes something like queen c2, 
Takes takes. The position is absolutely fine for us. I'm a bit interested as to what happens here, though. Because, yeah, if you take, then take. So apparently the best move here is to castle. Which is given a brilliant move. If you take here, then we take here. Yeah. If you take the bishop, then we take, and the knight's defended. Clearly there's a lot of compensation down the b-file here. And the fact that a knight could be taken, uh, ruining the pawn structure. So that's very good to know. So here e6 is best, and b queen b3 is not a problem because of bishop to d6. Queen can't really take on b7 because of castles, and if we exchange takes on b7, it's obviously bad. And if you take take knight bd2, then bishop g6, and if you castle, then we take the knight and ruin the pawn structure. Okay, that's how I like to learn my openings, through computer analysis like this. So, queen b6 is not that accurate, because after castles, queen takes b2 is a mistake. It's better to go e6. Why is this a mistake? Well, knight bd2, obviously. I thought queen takes c3 was the best move. Apparently bishop g6. I need to give the computer a second to figure this out, because it's changing its mind on me. It's giving this as the best move, so I don't know why it says it's a mistake. That's a bit weird. So yeah, bishop b5 was the line I was calculating, which is one of the best moves here. I was planning queen a5, which is apparently bad because of queen b3. Bishop g6 is apparently better, just controlling b1? No, that can't be good. Rook c8 defends the knight. Queen a4. a6 takes. Let me take with the queen, though. This is very weird. Rook fc1. The computer just changes its mind constantly. Takes you can't take because it takes. So if takes... Queen a3. Queen b7. Queen a8. Queen a8. Rook a8. Rook c6, we have equal material, and it's better for white, because white's more developed. Okay, that's a crazy line. Crazy line. So yeah, bishop b5 is good. Queen b1 is also good, defending the bishop and looking at b7. What a move. Also getting rid of the pin on the knight. Queen b4 looking to trade queens. Then the queen should rotate to the c file, and if you trade, this doesn't work because the bishop hangs. Bishop b5, knight c6, knight e5, and black should just give the pawn up. If knight takes, you take the bishop, because if knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, you lose a rook. So you should take like this, and then if the knight retreats, black is good. This is some really interesting analysis, at least to me anyway. Because if you play the Cairo Khan exchange variation, you will get positions like these. And h3 makes a lot of sense because it kicks the bishop off of being able to retreat back to this diagonal to help out with the defense. So if the queen does go to the c file, here, takes take. Rook AB1, you're just losing the B pawn, the knight's going to be undefended, this is bad. So, yeah, I shouldn't have taken on B2, but we did. We did. And we know for future, in this position, what is the move? The move is not Queen to B6, the move is E6, because Queen B3 is not scary on accounts of Bishop to D6. Alright? Awesome. Queen B6, castle. Queen b2, knight bd2, queen c3, and rook b1 is a blunder, because the bishop's hanging. Now if the bishop wasn't hanging, every other move is good for white here. Because the whole idea is that you're going to take advantage of this diagonal, and the fact that this bishop can't teleport to d7 to help out in the defense. But if you're going to go down a whole bishop for it, it's no good. Rook takes b7. 
even here, queen a3 and queen a6 are the only moves to keep the advantage for black, because otherwise the queen side is falling apart. These are some weak pieces. This is a weak king, and you need several moves to be able to castle, and it's not easy. So, yeah, queen a6 is the best move. Like I was saying, defends the knight, attacks the rook, and controls the key checking squares. Queen b3 is the best move. I take the knight. You don't have to take the knight, but I thought I'd throw it in. Apparently, it's the best move. Knight d8 here, and e6 are both playable. It gives knight d8 as the best move, so I don't know why it's calling it inaccurate. It's odd. I don't know. e6 is also good. Um, rook c1, I guess you're going to go knight d8 anyway. Yeah. So it makes sense, but... Ooh. Yeah, knight d8 first is absolutely fine. Rook b8 is not a good move. Um, on rook b4, like I was saying, I was going to go e6 attacking the rook. I didn't like e5, because then d takes e5. And if I take the rook, then he takes the knight, maybe, and it's uh, way too complicated. So I thought I'd keep it easy with e6. If rook a4 attacking my queen, then queen to... I can't go to b6 because then my rook's going to hang after the exchange. But b7 I can go to. If the queen rejects the trade, which obviously she wants to do. Uh, there's many moves I can play, but bishop e7 in castle looks like the simplest. Um, I was expecting rook c7 here to keep the rook on the 7th rank to make it difficult for me to castle like this, because then my bishop would be under attack. e6 all the same, rook fc1. One's knight e4, maybe with the intention of going bishop d6. Okay. Bishop a3 is also good though, attacking the rook and trying to castle, but if bishop a3, rook c3 attacking the bishop, the bishop has to go back to f8, which, you know, why would you want to do that? That's repeating moves. It should be seven. The game goes on. That's the thing because, you know, I'm up a piece, but my pieces aren't doing all that much. I thought White still had some fight here. Rook b8 was not the way to go though, because after the exchange, if I wanted to be nice and simple as well, I could just do e6, bishop c7, bishop e7 defending, and then I'm going to castle. But I thought it was better to go queen b7. I did also check knight d7. Apparently that is the best move to stop the queen from going to e5. Queen b3. Well, if the queen goes to a7, then I force a trade like this. So queen b3, and then I just continue like so. But I chose queen b7 because I thought it was easier to calculate, like I was saying. And yeah, the thing is, the best moves for white are to exchange queens Rook c1, rook b1, and queen takes b7 are the best moves. Obviously, rook c1 and b1 would be queen takes b8 and bishop takes b8. So yeah, after queen e5, this is actually a better version for black rather than knight d7 and queen b3 if white doesn't trade queens. And obviously, white can't trade queens from a practical standpoint. Here, I was just going to go e6. The rook can't come to b1, so I was expecting rook c1, something like bishop e7. You do have this, so the game, like I said, isn't over. But I can actually just give this check. <laughs> I can take a2, apparently. There is no actual breakthrough for white, and obviously this is not good because of this, but I was just planning on playing a move like queen b6, even if it's not 100% accurate. Because if I can castle, it's game over. So, yeah, that was the game. Very instructive, especially, at least for me anyway, this line with e6, queen b3, bishop d6 is one to remember. For myself, I guarantee I'll be using this in a future video. If you guys stayed until the end, then thank you very much for watching. If you haven't dropped a like yet, then I'd appreciate if you do, if you found this educational. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. It not only helps me out, but it means that my videos will show up in your YouTube feed.
feed more often so that you can continue to get educational chess content. Thank you for joining me in today's video. We're getting closer and closer to 2000 ELO and I'll see you in the next one.